This is a lesson on capacitors in the electrostatics unit. I wanted to first go over the anatomy of the capacitor and all of the important components and concepts of the capacitor, and then I have a few other slides that go into details on that. The anatomy of a capacitor is that it's two parallel plates. That's what we're going to be studying here. So we have parallel plates. I'll write that down for us. Uh, so the distance between all of the surfaces of those two plates is equal to one another. Uh, once we get two parallel plates set up, we need to figure uh, their area in. Uh, each of them has an area. They will be equal in area, and that will be the surface area. The shape of this area does not matter. This could be a circular uh, plate. This could be triangular, square, rectangular, any shape you can think of. Um, but they just need to be parallel to one another, and we need to know the area. The other thing that we will be concerned with is the distance between these two plates, and that is called D. Uh, so that, um, and when you think about it, when we think about what we're going to do with the capacitor, we're going to put charge on one plate, a positive charge on one plate, and we're going to put a negative charge on the other plate. And the distance becomes important because we know that charges that are separated by a distance are going to have an electric field between them, they're going to have a voltage between them, etc. An electric potential energy will be between them, and all of those terms depend on the distance between charges. So when we look at the anatomy of a capacitor, it's no surprise that the distance between the plates are going, is going to be important. Well, going back to the fact that we have charges being held a distance apart, we know that there's going to be an electric field in the region between these two plates. And electric fields point from positive to negative. So I can draw an electric field in here between these two plates. And um, they start at the positive charge and at the negative charge. We know that electric field lines flow from high potential to low potential. So I know this is going to be the higher voltage, this V1 at the positive plate, and this is going to be a lower voltage um, V2 over at the negative plate. So those are the larger quantities that we're going to work with when we look at capacitors. Is there is a charge on the plates, which causes an electric field and a voltage. And the charge on the plates is affected by the the capacitor's ability to hold charge. So there's details about the area and the displacement, etc. What's in between those two plates? I haven't mentioned dielectrics yet, but we could put a dielectric in between those two plates and take the effect of a dielectric into account. So that's sort of an overview of the different details that I'm going to go over in the next couple of slides. So the first consideration that we will look at is the physical capacitor. What's actually going on with the capacitor that allows it to be able to hold charge? Capacitor's primary function, what we use capacitors for, is to hold charge a distance apart. And this causes the system to store electric potential energy. That's an important thing for us is to be able to use energy and store energy. And so the electric field holding charges a distance apart is an easy way to hold energy. The capacitor's inherent ability to hold charge depends on the area. Notice the area of the capacitor plates is in here. The distance between those two plates there's a kappa value in here, and you can read down here, kappa is the dielectric constant of the material between the plates. So as I mentioned on the previous slide, we could put some sort of um, substance in here, and that would affect the area in between because uh, charges would be affected by the electric field in between of whatever substance we put in there. And epsilon naught is the permittivity of free space, which you're familiar with this constant already with electric fields. Uh, notice this little diagram I put down here from OpenStax uh, College Physics text. This is also a capacitor. These plates are considered to be parallel to one another. You just take this arrangement and you curl it up. Uh, like a fancy cake maybe, and then that is also, the plates are parallel, they're equidistant from one another, and so that's what you will see in maybe circuits, when you think of a circuit board, 
One thing I wanted to talk about before I moved on from this slide is units. Uh, there's a few units I wanted to worry about here. Uh, the dielectric constant between the two plates is a dimensionless quantity. So it does not have any units at all. Uh, so when I look at the units of capacitance, that's a dimensionless quantity. I'll have Coulomb squared uh, over newtons times meter squared. I multiply by a meter squared, that would get rid of those meters squared, divide by another meter. So I get Coulomb squared over newtons times meters. Um, and the equivalent of that, that, that's the SI sort of version of it. This is shorthanded as a farad, okay, and represented with an F for farad. So when you see the units of capacitance, it will be in farads, and the kappa is a dimensionless value. So that's the details of the actual physical situation of the capacitor that helps it be able to hold that charge. Because the charge is being held a distance apart, we're going to have an electric field between those plates. And I have that represented here. I'm looking at the capacitor from the side. So this is the side view of the plates. There's two of them there. And the electric field flows in between them. And what we know is that the electric field between those two plates, and notice I'm not worried about the two ends. Of course, there's going to be bowing of the electric field out on the two ends. But what we're primarily concerned for is this area where the electric field is a constant value. And we looked at how to find the electric potential for a constant electric field. And that's just ED, the ED equation, the voltage difference from one point to the other uh, across this capacitor, delta V, is just the electric field times the distance between those two plates. Uh, electric fields point from high to low potential, so we know that this is always going to be the high potential side and this is always going to be the low potential side. This will be relevant a little bit more as you head into looking at circuits and um, which direction charge flows and which is the high side and low side of potential for circuit elements. So that allows us to relate the potential to the electric field and the distance between the plates in the capacitor. We can also look at the charge and how it relates to these different things in the capacitor. The amount of charge that can be held on capacitor plates of a capacitor depends on the capacitance. You can see that in the equation here and the voltage difference across those plates, which we're not going to write delta V in anymore. It's just going to be AV, and we're going to assume that that is a delta V, okay? So that would be the voltage across that capacitor. Whatever voltage difference is there, that's the voltage that goes in here. So the charge on these two plates, and this would be a positive charge, and this would be a negative charge. We can relate that to the actual physical things going on with the capacitor, the area, the dielectric, the distance between them, and the voltage applied be across those two plates. Each plate holds this amount of charge. I've seen questions like this and students stumble a little bit. And just to clarify, is that one plate holds a positive Q, and the other plate holds a negative Q. As many charges that are positive on this side, Q is as many charges on the negative plate, Q. The net charge is zero overall. So when you use this equation and they ask for how many charges is on a plate, you don't have to divide by two. That is the amount of charge on a plate. So now we have this equation as well to work with. We can relate to the charge to the other quantities in the going on for the capacitor. So I picked out just a straightforward problem for us to work on uh, to understand how to use these equations, some vocabulary, recognizing terms in the problems. And this is the voltage of a charge capacitor. It says an empty parallel plate capacitor is connected between the terminals of a 9-volt battery and charged up. Okay. So when it says empty, what I'm going to know is that there's nothing in between and the plates, and when that's true, the kappa value is 1. I talk about the kappa value in another lesson, but we'll just note right now that we don't need to worry about any kappa value. We just have this for the value of the, the uh, capacitance of the capacitor. The capacitor is disconnected from the battery, so after it gets charged up, 
by the battery it gets disconnected. So I'm going to draw this out for you. Uh, in a situation, we're going to hook a capacitor up to a battery. And this is a very simple circuit. We have two circuit elements. We're going to have the battery with a voltage on one side and the parallel ca plate capacitor on the other. And as you get used to representing circuit elements, the battery will always have a short plate and a long plate, whereas the capacitor is going to have equal distance plates, equal plates, because they're the equal size. Okay, So that's how you tell a battery and a capacitor apart in a circuit. What happens is we use the voltage here in order to charge up the capacitor. So when the capacitor gets charged up, it will have that much voltage between its plates. And then we're going to disconnect it. And let's read what it says here. The spacing between the plates of the capacitors increased by a factor of 3.3. So the capacitor is disconnected from the battery and then the plates are increased. So I'm going to note that there's some sort of D1 here, some distance between the plates to begin with, which c corresponds to a C1, an original value for the capacitance. When I change the distance between it, the capacitance will change. When I look at the second situation here, uh, we're going to have the capacitor plates increase distance between them, so I'll call this D2. And um, so we have some new capacitance C2. And what's the same between these two situations is that the the battery charged up the capacitor and there's some charge on the capacitor. So when we disconnect a charged capacitor, there's going to be that same amount of charge on those plates. That charge hasn't gone anywhere yet. And what they're telling us is what as a result of this change, what is the new voltage? So there will not be the same voltage. Whatever this voltage from the battery is, it won't be the same as when we increase this distance. Now those charges are a greater distance apart, and we know that has to affect the electric field in between, and it'll affect the voltage. So uh, how do we relate these two, though? That's what we need to know. And they didn't even give us the area or the distance between. What they tell us is that there's a factor of 3.3. In problem solving, when I see that there's a factor of 3.3 and I'm not given any values for some of these important quantities, I'm going to set up a relationship and hope that these quantities will cancel on both sides or top and bottom or something like that. So let's go in that direction. What I do know is this. C1 will equal epsilon naught A D1. And I also know that C2 equals epsilon naught A over D2. I've not changed the area, um, but I changed the distances. And I also know the relationship here. I know that um, epsilon naught A over, well, they tell me that D2 is 3.3 times D1. So I'm going to plug that in up here. 3.3 times D1, and I'm going to note that this quantity, I'm going to get a different color out here, notice that this quantity here is C1. Notice that? So the easiest way to represent this relationship is to say that C2 equals C1 divided by 3.3. So I'm going to use that in my relationships here. They want a new voltage. And the thing that I know is the same from one situation to the other is, like I said, these charges. The charges don't have anywhere to go. They're just sitting there from whatever situation was here, positive Q and negative Q in that situation. Is this still the same positive Q and negative Q in this situation? So when I look up here, Q is this last equation, and I know that Q1 has to equal Q2. And you may see where this is going. I'm going to have to take C1 multiplied by V1, and that will equal C2 multiplied by V2. Well, I have an expression of C2 in terms of C1, and I'll plug that in. C1 V1 equals C1 over 3.3 times V2. C1 cancels on both sides. Like I said, some of these quantities will likely cancel. If you're not given any exact values, and um, there's a factor, likely there's going to be some things to cancel. So when I get in this situation in V2, it equals 3.3 times V1. 
So I'm going to take 3.3 and multiply by 9. That's the 9 volt battery there. And so V2 will equal 29.7 volts. So we have an increase in voltage.